Is Classroom for Heroes the next big light novel that you guys need to read? Join me and find out. Hello and welcome back to That Light Novel Guy and today we are looking at a review of Classroom for Heroes and this one is an interesting one because if I'm perfectly honest I was quite impressed by the synopsis. Classroom for Heroes sounds like My Hero Academia. Some think that, if I'm perfectly honest, a franchise that I really enjoyed the early parts of, but kind of quickly grew out of. And yeah, I thought, you know what, we've got to have all of these heroes in a fantasy setting go into this classroom to train to be heroes. Interesting premise. Yeah, that quickly went out the window. Now, if I'm perfectly honest, this is a review copy sent to me by Yen Press for a fair and honest review, and I am going to give it to you. Classroom for Heroes tells the story of Bleed. That's right, our main protagonist is called Bleed. And that is pretty much a one word thing for this entire series. A character called Bleed, you know. You all know what you are going to get into. And yeah, our protagonist Blade, he, well, he has already saved the world. He has defeated the Overlord. And now he's been forced into school. Because reasons. Now, I like the concept. I like the concept of a school having to train up and coming heroes for an eventual Overlord attack. But if I'm perfectly honest, it kind of ruins it somewhat having us already know that the hero has already beaten the overlord but we'll not mind that too much well how is blade as a character he's as you would expect he runs around the school going i am blade i am blade i am blade because he has zero social skills whatsoever even though he's been in a party who's already defeated the overlord and is 16 yeah if you kind of said he originally was a silent protagonist and we were gonna go and have him get over that we might have a little bit of a fun thing but as to be expected blade is literally just a self insert for you to get to know the girls in the series and if i'm perfectly honest the girls were um, well a tad bit more interesting we have ernest the red-haired one who the author explains at the end is pretty much going to be the girlfriend of the series we have Sophia, who is the very emotionally distant one, who may or may not be a robot. Yes, as I said, this is far more interesting than Blade, our main character who runs around shouting, I am Blade. We also have a dragon girl who is basically the daughter of the series. And yeah, Blade beats the dragon and automatically gets the daughter as a thing. Now, I'm very well aware that I am well beyond the age rating for this series. This says 13 and up, but it really reads worse than a lot of the G novel ones I read. You know, the junior ones. I mean, they were for 8 and up, they were kind of standardised for it. This pretty much runs into every single trope that you can imagine. And when I see every single trope, I mean our overpowered protagonist who is not interesting whatsoever and is incredibly dense. Like, I mean too stupid to live dense. You know, we have these characters. We have Monkey D. Luffy who, he's dumb, but he's not too dumb. He kind of, there's a lot going on in there. We have other protagonists where they're kind of just naive. This is somebody who has been on a world quest and defeated the Demon Lord, yet is too incredibly stupid to live. He walks around shoveling curry in his mouth and just opens the doors to whichever female character, well, is currently topless. Yes, that's right, it's one of them series as well. Our protagonist is too stupid, so he doesn't have, well, any 
I wouldn't say morals, he's just too stupid to understand that girls need their privacy. And of course you have many, many scenes where he will open the door and one of our protagonist's girls will be getting changed. He takes a bath with the dragon girl, he ends up on dates with Sophia and yeah, it's you know what this is kind of going for. And it's kind of one of those things where, you know what, I don't mind a bit of etchy if it's warranted. You know, we've got stuff like Konosuba, which it's an etchy series, but it kind of makes sense. The main protagonist is often described as a horrible person. We have Monster Girl Doctor, we've got Interspecies Reviewers. If you want an etchy series, check them out. But Classroom for the Heroes, yeah. Our hero running around just barging into girls' rooms while they're changing. And they're either eek or punch or... Actually, to be fair, one of them was kind of just so relaxed and laid back about it. They just genuinely didn't care. That character ended up being probably the most interesting thing in the whole thing. Of course you have the other friends, the one who is the one who likes every woman ever. And yeah, it's trope after trope after trope. You know, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This series has a lot of potential. There are a lot of really nice things in here. Like I said, the girl characters, they have a lot of interesting things. I like the idea that the king is essentially the principal. And, of course, we have the healer, who is an older woman, who also tries to, well, basically get with the hero. She is the school nurse. Yeah. I like the ideas. I like the idea of having, you know, the, 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 the previous party kind of teaching a new generation. I like that idea. But what we get in here is not really reflective of that. There's so many good ideas. There's so many things that you could say, oh, there's a nice little gem hiding in here. And it's something that you kind of would be interested in. But it doesn't really go all of the way. It's bogged down by a terrible protagonist. The author specifically says it's about this protagonist and the other, this one's his girlfriend, the other one's his mom, the other one's his daughter, and it's about him having fun. You're not going to expect big world changing events and stuff like that. And yeah, I kind of get that. I understand for it's 13 and up, but at the same point, 13 and up is the same age range for the likes of. A sentence of a bookworm that's designed for teens we've got stuff like secrets of the silent witch we've got modern day uh, like classroom stuff like classroom of the elite and uh, rascal does not dream we have so many things doing school settings that do it in a more respectful and well thought out way this is one of those series that's Honestly, I like the idea of, I felt that there was a lot of potential, but just didn't deliver. And it's a huge shame. I mean, like I said at the beginning, our protagonist is called Blade. And I think that is something that really instantly set off alarm bells for me, knowing what I was getting into with this series. It's not a good series. It's not a terrible series. If I read this and I was 13 year old, I probably would have a little bit of fun. But looking on it with an adult's eyes, there's so much wrong with it. There's so much better out there that you guys can really do better.